in our understanding language is the love and joy and peace. And we've experienced love, joy, and peace, even though it may be fractions at a time. But can you imagine this eternal, blissful experience of love, joy, and peace eternal? Our minds cannot comprehend it because in, separate, in the separate space-time illusion of mind, we would, we, in the mind imagines immediately that this would be an eternity of love, peace, and joy and total boredom. I mean, can you imagine nothing, just love, joy, and peace? How would you, what were you going to do for love, joy, and peace? No, you do nothing. You need to do nothing for love, joy, and peace. You are love, joy, and peace. Who am I going to talk to? There is no one to talk to. It's all, there's no talking. It's just love, joy, and peace. And in our separate mind, we fear that because all of us, and can I just see when you all wave at me on the screen, how many of you experience boredom often? I mean, John talks to teddy bears. I mean, he's a tender age of 35 and he's still talking to teddy bears. You know, um, Manuela talks to teddy bears. Brenda talks to dolls, you know. Renat and Christo are safe, they're mature. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, can you imagine, I mean, 60 days of lockdown and I'm ready to pull my hair out and it's starting to grow, as you can see, and I need to shave. I can't imagine another 60 days of this. Now we're going to talk about eternity and I've had 60 days of relative peace and calmness and, and, and somewhat joyous, you know. Um, can you imagine an eternity? And so, the separate ego the separate self, the small self, is, is, is scared, is really frightened of uniting with God. And this idea of this eternity of blissful nothing. And yet, it calls from within us. And yet we want to unite with Jesus. We want to, you know, we have this concept, idea of what Jesus must be like, must have been like, which is based on a belief system. Some of us have conversed and communed with Christ, with Jesus, and we've had this experience, this incredible filling of the heart, this incredible experience of, of quiet joy and quiet peace in Christ's presence. But then we go off and, you know, have a drink and meet a few friends and, and the meditation's over, the yoga's over. We look forward to it next week, Friday. But can you imagine an eternity of this? It's frightening to the separate self. It's frightening to the ego. And in Lesson 95, um, um, Section 2, it says, you see yourself as a, as a ridiculous parody on God's creation, weak, vicious, ugly, sinful, miserable, and beset with pain. Such is a version of yourself, a self divided into many warring parts, separated from God. Even the strongest believers in God from a dualistic place, think of, they love God, but they separate it from God. And they hope that if they behave and do things according to St. Peter's good book, they'll return to God. Okay. So separate from God and tenuously held together. Okay. By its erratic and capricious maker to which you pray. It does not hear your prayers. Okay. For it is deaf. It does not see the oneness in you for it is blind. It does not understand you are the son of God for it is senseless and understands nothing. And this is the idea that subconsciously people hold of God. They want to love God. They want to love Jesus. But subconsciously, they are fearful of this image that never, it's, never responds and allows all sorts of suffering to happen in the world and, and the abuse of women and the, the, the terrible abuse of wars and, and what happens to little children. And, and so we are secretly afraid of this conceptual God 
that we really do not actually understand, but have learned to believe in because of the Old Testament and religious ways of, of sharing hell and damnation and fear. So if you don't behave, then you're not going to go to heaven and you're going to burn in eternity. So what the course does is it says in, in, in section three is, um, chapter, paragraph three, is today we will attempt to be aware only of what we can hear and see and what makes perfect sense. We will again direct our ex exercises towards reaching your one self, which is united with its creator in patience and in hope we try again today. And so what our life is, is a series of terrible little miseries, okay, which are, which are blessings in disguise. All these little moments of, of challenge, of loss, of separation, of pain, of disappointment, disillusionment, betrayal, over and over again. Because if we, if we saw this dream as a happy, happy dream and everything was perfect, we wouldn't realize we're separated from God. We'd still see ourselves happy, but separated. Okay. And in, in paragraph eight, it says, the Holy Spirit is not delayed in his teachings by your mistakes. That's what's so fantastic is no matter how many mistakes you make, no matter how bad a sinner you thought you were, Okay, the Holy Spirit is not delayed in his teachings by your mistakes. And remember, in the Course of Miracles, we've gone a little bit further beyond the old, the old Bible. Um, and, and, and we're now no longer looking upon the errors of man as sin, but simply as mistakes that can be corrected by the light of the Holy Spirit. Okay, he can be held back only by your unwillingness to let go. So what prevents us from fully experiencing ourselves in Christ, so beyond the acceptance of Christ in us, but fully experiencing the unconditional love of Christ inside Christ is our unwillingness to let go the idea of a separate self because we fear fundamentally at the very core of our essence, of the ego's essence, we fear that in Christ, in God, is just going to be boring. Because we cannot conceive of a lifetime united with joyous, peace, and loving God. Okay? Um, in, in paragraph 11, it says, I am oneself. Repeat this several times and attempt to feel the meaning of the words you convey. You are the one self, united and secure in light and joy and peace. You are God's one son. Okay. Now remember, he's talking collectively to all of us. No one left out. Okay. You are God's one son. One self, capitalized, with one creator and one goal. And here it is, teachers for God, to bring awareness of this oneness to all minds that true creation may extend the allness and the unity of God. You are the one self capitalized complete and healed and whole with the power to lift the veil of darkness from the world and let the light in you come through to teach the world, the truth about yourself. You are the one self in perfect harmony with all there is and all that they will be. And I just want to draw attention to harmony as opposed to balance. Okay. Imagine an orchestra playing. It's harmonious because at one stage it'll be the violin is the loudest, then the trombone, then the piano, then the drums. And that's that harmony, that up and down melody is what makes the, the, the beautiful music. Okay. If it was all balanced, you'd, it, all instruments would be playing equally at all the same time. Harmony is this beautiful up and down flow, the ebb and the tide. So you are oneself in perfect harmony with all there is. So even now, right now, in lockdown, from, from a Christ mind perspective, there is a harmony taking place as there's a realignment, a realignment of the world, of nature, but most importantly of the mind, as it starts to 
either give itself to the Christ or give itself to the ego. To the ego through resistance to what is in acceptance to what, of what is, non-resistant mind giving itself over to love or Christ as we, we, men, we call him. Okay. You are one self, the holy son of God, united with your brothers in that self, united with your father in his will. Feel this one self in you and let it shine away all your illusions and your doubts. This is your self, the son of God himself, sinless as its creator, with the strength within you and his love forever yours. You are one self, and it is given you to feel the self within you, to cast all your illusions out of the one mind that is the self, the holy truth about yourself, the holy truth about you. So this is something worth celebrating. This is something worth being so happy and joyous about. This is, this is salvation. And, and what, I, what I urge upon you is to, to be aware that in this one self, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And I hope that's making sense. I want to share um, the screen with you for a second. And I don't know if you can all see this, and I just want to explain what this diagram means. We start at the bottom here. Okay. So imagine everything we everything you're seeing on this page is everything is happening in God. So this at this in the bottom um, left hand side of, of the picture is the unconscious awareness. Okay, the unconscious awareness, the intellect instinct of the human being. This is the personality. Okay. And what happens is it's got the two aspects of the ego. The bad ego, the good ego, the two false selves, okay? The bad ego, easy to recognize. It's unhappy, it's nasty, stingy, unkind, negative, rigid in its beliefs, argumentative, likes to fight, likes to go to war. And then there's the happy ego, less obvious. Very often, people mistake good ego with, with spirit or the self, okay? And yet, it's, it's this part of, its, of our self is the hero of the dream wants to be the hero it wants to be the the central figure in the dream and and this this happy ego is happy and funny and charitable and kind and flexible it's all the nice stuff you know they play with teddy bears and they're good people right and um it's just it's it's a nice idea of itself but it's still the ego these are the people that that ask the question why do bad things happen to good people okay because i'm good why is this happening to me it's because we're unaware that we're still in ego. And as we, as we willingly seek out a better way, because remember when we, when we go on the search originally, we have no idea what we're seeking. We may have a concept, you know, we have an objectified concept of what we think God is or a circumstantial objective. In other words, a circumstance with an objective in mind that we once experienced perhaps in prayer or meditation or in celebration. And, and we imagine that to be what we're looking for. We, so we go searching. And so we, we go through um, what the non-dualistic teachings, uh, Abita would call the neti neti. Okay? Translated easily to English, I go the not not. Okay? What the not not is, is the beginning as we start to realize what we are through the experience of what we're not. Okay, so I'm not this. I'm not my feelings. I'm not my emotions. I'm not my ideas. I'm not the idea that I think I was. Even that's changing. I'm not even my perception of what I think I am or others are. So I'm not that. So we get to a point eventually where we realize, hell, I have no idea what I am. <laughs> and actually, that feels good. It's like a complete surrender of any idea I had before what I thought I was. 
And this is when we start to become aware. We start to become aware that we're so much more than our body. We're even so much more than our thoughts. There's something that's aware of the thoughts that are not the, th the thinker. You start to become aware that you're not the thinking mind. You become aware that those thoughts are random and not yours, especially if you stay away from them and don't attach to them. Okay. And then you sort of become, I am, I am not this. And then there's just the, I am. And then there's the, I, and then this place ego tries to grab you again, because down below in unconscious awareness and intellect and instinct, there was definitely an I as well. And that I was all about I, 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 or me, me, me. As we move into higher consciousness, this I doesn't attach itself, this higher I doesn't attach itself to any properties. Okay. It goes beyond I am. It just becomes the I awareness. I am aware. I start to become aware that I am the awareness that is. Okay. Now, at, at a certain level, remember, right, where everything's happening, God, everything is happening in Christ. But this I now starts to become aware of this incredible love, joy, and peace, which is God. It starts to become aware that it's not separated from God. And because it's still in appearance in the physical realm, this world, we now start to move with this I awareness, this I consciousness awareness, this Christ awareness into the world. Because we've invited Christ into us. We realize we're now a part of that which is Christ. Therefore, we be part of that which is Christ. We're in God, never left. We're in this world. We offer ourselves up as a vessel for the Holy Spirit as we become teachers for God. And so we come into this world as representations of the Christ. Now be careful as I say this, because this, this is not something we go out and say from an ego perspective. This isn't the psychosomatic condition where people believe they're Jesus. You get that psychosis where many people think they're Jesus or the deity or Buddha. You don't think you're anything. You've let go of any idea. You don't, you don't speak up, and, oh, I am Christ. You're not Christ. But Christ is in you, and you are in Christ. In essence, you become the avatar, the, this vessel, which is a manifestation of the denial of God, because God had nothing to do with your body. The fallen mind created the universe, created the body. Of course, this has all happened in God. No physical universe, no physical body would have been possible if it wasn't happening in God. Because God is what gives everything the, the creative energy to be physical, to, to appear physical. But you now come into this world as the messenger. The old self is now receded. may pop in every now and again, but you become aware of it. You know, at first you become aware of it. And then a couple of days, go, you know, you, you may react to something. And a couple of days later, the awareness may come in. As you become more and more conscious, you may react still to something, okay, and you realize well, who's reacting, and then maybe an hour later, the awareness comes up, and, you, and you, who acted that way, and you, you, know, you don't like the, you do not like the way that you felt, and as you become more aware, you may react, and then almost instantly, the awareness is there, oh my goodness, who's this, and you back off, and you don't let it take you. And as you really go deeper into the awareness, the awareness I am that I am, even if you react, it'll be just such a small reaction that it won't really affect you. And eventually you'll just observe all of this, all of these things happening around you, no reaction, just full present conscious awareness. Okay. And, and what do you do now? The course is very specific. It says I need do nothing. Now I need do nothing. Simply be aware. And when you're in that stillness, that be still and know I am space, God speaks through you, through the Holy Spirit, into you, into your awareness, and vision comes. And the minute he speaks to you with vision, very clear, very simple, clear ideas of what to do, then you act. And you'll realize that when you're acting, you're acting from a place of unconditional love. So you become the manifestation of unconditional love in action, in form. You become the awakened dreamer.
Okay, you become the happy dreamer. And happy dreamers are very easy to spot. They always have a smile on their face. They're just, they're happy. Because no matter what's going on inside, inside the flow through the face, through the eyes, through the lips, through the mouth is happy. You know, they're not frowning and they're not looking like there's a storm going on. And if it happens, it happens very quickly. They step out of it very quickly. Okay. These people will want for very little from this material world. And yet they're always taken care of. Because I can promise you this much, when you've offered yourself to God, you will have more than what you need, okay? But not necessarily what the old ego self wanted because those things are no more value to you. You know, I now joke, for example, you heard me joke earlier on, I joke about my 12 disciples, my 12 motorcycles. It's almost ridiculous. What have I got 12 motorcycles for? You know, you know, I know Manuela has got at least 20 teddy bears, but, and John's got at least two dozen, but, you know, and he's waving. Um, and you're like, what do you need 20 teddy bears for? One is sufficient, you know, surely. You see, there he is, Paddington, there he is. Um, it's just those things that we wanted, we may still have them. I'm not saying throw them away. Don't deny them. Resisting them, resisting having it is no dif dif different from pursuing the desire for them. Just stay there, accept them as they are, because you now will start to flow into this world, okay, with full conscious awareness, conscious of your awareness, love in knowing, in form. And now you become a teacher for God. And that's, that's the healed teacher. This is the healed teacher. Now, bearing in mind, you still have a personality, and people that meet you that haven't seen you for 20 years, you're still the same personality, just different. How different? Well, just easier to get along. There'll be something about you that'll just, and people will say to you, you've changed. And they'll try and, they'll, they'll go physically into you first. They'll go, it's your hair, your glasses, oh, you've got a beard now. You know, Brenda, if they tell you you've got a beard, then smack them, okay? But, you know, I get that. So they'll just, they'll, they'll try and say so, oh, you know, you, 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 uh, you're wearing a new, you know, is it a new top or something, you know? And, uh, well, they'll, they'll give us stupid compliments like, um, God bless them calling them stupid, but they'll say something like, oh, have you lost weight or, you know, have you had uh, surgery or they'll say something They their little egoic minds won't comprehend what they're feeling. Okay. And they'll be surprised at how other people that know you as the new, the new self are reacting to you because they may not have reacted to you that way or ever seen anyone react to you that way. All of a sudden, you may have what seems to be the egoic minds, a popularity. You, people are drawn to you. And they won't understand that because they're not drawn to your physicality. They're not drawn to your wonderful personality. They're drawn to the Christ in you, the Christ that's flowing from you to the world. They're drawn to Christ. They're drawn to the essence of the Holy Spirit. This is where you have to remain conscious. And Jesus teaches us, he says, keep your lanterns burning because the thief comes in the middle of the night through the back door. So as teachers for God, this is where many a teacher for God has fallen. Okay. Because he, he ran away from the world or she ran away from the world to deny the world. They've been hurt or they've suffered loss or abuse or betrayal or denial in relationships. And now all of a sudden you've got a crowd of people coming your way, often throwing themselves at you just for attention. And this is where vigilance is required. That you remain conscientious, that you remain in, in loving, knowing form, that you that you treat them as little children with, with, with total compassion and patience and love and do not step across the boundaries of, of ethics and morality and be, be very vigilant our, our, as a teacher for God. You, you portray or project that self-image into the world because this is where so much damage is done uh, through religion 
and you know all these fake prophets as they claim to be something you know um i've seen uh, people that that are not religious live unconditional love you know i've seen people that are religious completely misuse their positions of power you know um i have a very good friend eric who um lives a traditional um christian life and he teaches such a wonderful lesson in one of his uh, one of the, a book that he's written and he's in a in a in a in a in a, in a ghetto slum and he's gone there to do the teachings of jesus and and he's busy talking to a poor man about jesus and he and he stops for a second and he thinks you know this guy is starving he doesn't have any shoes he doesn't you know his clothes are tattered it's cold he doesn't have a jersey and he stops himself for a second he goes hang a second before i'm going to teach this man about jesus let me give him a jersey so he takes his jersey off and gives it to this guy he takes his shoes off and gives it to this guy okay now this is a traditional christian the difference here is he lives in christ okay and and when i talk to eric and i love talking to eric because when i talk to eric eric is living miracles he's not living the old testament the old way and god and damnation and hell and fire when you talk to eric he talks love okay he uses traditional christian terms but he lives christ okay so as as students of a course in miracles be careful that you don't judge the the things that failed you in the past so religion traditional religion failed you in the past and course in miracles has has reignited your relationship with jesus christ holy spirit god be careful that you don't criticize and be careful